hope that rain outside isn't too loud, but I haven't do this at the window because the lighting's just atrocious because it's such a wet day. Anyway, I wanted to show you this here. This is what I call my writer's commonplace book. I think I might have shown it before. It was a little bit different. I've put a cover on it just to make it look a bit prettier. And I had started putting things in. So a commonplace book is things you put in. It's information, it's inspiration, quotes, all kinds of different things that you want to keep in the one place that you can, you know, look back on. Uh, this one I've decided to make it because I had started it. I just didn't know what it was called. Um, I just called it my sort of writer's catch-all, but it's actually a, what they call a commonplace book. So if I open it up, and this is just my index. For, and this is what I put in here. Possessing a creative mind is like having a border collie for a pet. If you don't give it a job to do, it will find a job to do. And you might not like the job it invents. And that's Elizabeth Gilbert by Big Magic. By Big, who wrote Big Magic, which I might add quotes in here because I really like that book. And this is just images for my own uh, projects. This is the eight heroine archetypes. And this is the eight hero archetypes. And then we have the 16 villain archetypes. So, um, sorry, I need to move something. Oh, good me. Um, yeah, so I was actually going to start another book. So I haven't written in this for such a long time. Um, but after all this work that I've done in it, I didn't want to. And this is... Um, Robin Hobbs Farseer books and then just a little inspo why I would like to why it inspired me to be a writer sort of thing or the kind of writer I'd like to be and then it's just the spread of her books this is some of those might put in place name ideas here and blank character name ideas so this is what I've just done recently and this is about horses um it's an actual fantasy writer who wrote a book on it because she's also a horse owner. And just the mistakes that people have made in, well, not just books, but all creative media when it comes to horses. You know, the fact that they're not machines and can't go for miles and miles at a full gallop. You know, that's just, I mean, I've always thought that was a bit ridiculous anyway. I mean, Jesus Christ, they're, they're animals. Um, so yeah, anyway. So this is just all from, from that book, all the information. Um, you know, it's quite interesting the fact that they don't actually vocalise a lot. Um, they have no self-control when it comes to eating. How much water they actually need. Um, but I'll have to actually look into um, horses that live in like desert areas. See if there's something else. There, I don't think there was that much about that. Um, it says they do have an infallible internal time clock when it comes to meal times, but I think that's all animals because my cats would always sit in the kitchen an hour before they were due to get fed. Or if you made a move towards the kitchen in a three hour time frame, they were right there wanting to be fed. But yeah, so this is just all the different information that I had. And because I'd already put something in, I had to like continue. I didn't realise I had written so much. And this is just um, Ambitious Black Jewels series, which I love as well. And another um, author spread for her. And then it's just more about the horses. Um, and how... I mean, I've always known this. I've known this for a long time. That the Shire horse was actually bred for... Um, going into battle uh, and they were cost an absolute fortune so they wouldn't be used for anything else they were um, guarded and well looked after and the knight used another horse for you know everyday use sort of thing and apparently mares made better war horses I suppose they were a bit steadier temperament wise um, and then there's a lot on here just how how far they can actually go in a day and uh, having their 
hoof shod as well, you know, horseshoes. A little bit about that, which is quite interesting. And certainly something to put a more real, realistic slant on horses in my books, hopefully. Uh, this was something uh, put the Poisoner's Handbook. This is because this is just an image I got, but it was a book, I think it's called Deadly Doses, and it's by Writer's Digest. And it's really just all about the different, I mean, it goes through from natural poisons right through to man made. So I've put down all the natural ones. But if I ever do a more contemporary book, I can always look up some of the um, more modern day poisons that are manu man made, manufactured. So that just goes through all the different ones, the plants. See, this is why I didn't want to start another notebook because I'd written a lot for this one. Uh, so this just goes on about all the different plants and such. I think I, I'd re remembered about this when I was at the Poison Garden in Nanak Castle. So there we have the Fragile Fungi. This is clearly where I got fed up of writing down everything like this and just put them in in their score. Um, and then snakes and spiders and other things. Like jellyfish and scorpions. Do we have scorpions? Oh yeah. Common shrimp scorpion. Yeah, right in front of you. And that's it so far. So I've got lots of pages left. And I do have some ideas. I've looked out all the kind of scrap bits of paper that I've put information and things like that down on that I want to put somewhere. And I kept meaning to. But now I've got this that I can put it all into. And just refer back to it when I need to, you know, maybe inspiration or things like that. I can put images, anything, thoughts, ideas, whatever, into my writer's commonplace book. So all you authors out there, let me know if you have such a thing as a commonplace book for your writing. Or if it's maybe something you would be interested in doing. And you can maybe show us yours. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. Bye.